Thanks for joining us in the trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics. As always, coming to you from our outstanding studio setup, DJ Reader, today's guest. DJ covers a lot of ground, talks about the, the bitter defeat at the hands of the Pittsburgh Steelers, how they he is getting over it and the team's getting over it and moving on. And the next opponent, next team up, Dallas Cowboys. Head down to Dallas, correct a few things, get a big dub. Talks about uh, his other athletic prowesses, his philosophy on life, his philosophy on a lot of things. DJ Reader's good people. You're going to enjoy this. Welcome once again. We're in the trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics, coming to you from our outstanding studios here. We got everything set, and we got an outstanding guest to join us here, DJ Reader, who is run stuff for extraordinaire, gives you that pass rush, the interior pass rush that's needed. In my opinion, it was a disgrace that he didn't go to the Pro Bowl last year because it was his play was most definitely Pro Bowl worthy. Appreciate you taking time, DJ, uh, to sit down and chat with us here a little bit, my man. Hey, Dave, man. Appreciate you having me, man. Appreciate it. So, it was one of those days, man. Yeah. It, it, it was like, okay, kind of put ourselves on the schedule. The turnovers, you don't have to be a football Einstein to figure you go minus five in the turnover department, that's going to hurt you. Yeah. It was a tough day at the office. You know, um, it was just one of those games where, you know, especially on the defensive side of the ball, you felt like you kept coming going out there and wasn't much going on. But then, you know, you look up and it's still the score, even not much is going on. It just seems like you can't figure out why things aren't going quite your way. And, um, you know, we couldn't get any turnovers for him back. Got some stops, but we couldn't get the ball back for him in an impactful way to where, you know, it helped them get a little juice going on on their side of the ball. Yeah, that's no turnovers, uh, no takeaways, but five three and outs. I mean, yeah. <laughs> some of the some of these drives, it, it was it was amazing. I'm I'm looking at the drive sheet here. Three plays, nine yards. Three plays, five yards. Three plays, six yards. <laughs> I mean, three plays, two yards. Three plays, seven yards. Are you kidding? I mean, that's that's yeah. uh, that's shutting them down. You know, I mean, it, it, you guys did that over and over again. You know. It, and then, and then the other factor is when the offense did give the football away, your sudden change, you know, you got put in some bad spots with short fields and tough predicaments. You guys stood up, man, stood up strong. I mean, yeah, you know, our job is to go play defense. No matter what it's, what's going on, it's, that's our job, especially on um, that side of the ball. And we take that with pride in our in our room and, uh, as a unit with the, the leaders and everybody on the team. We really – we try to wear that – that title with pride. Our pride is to, our, our jobs to go play defense. That's what we're supposed to do. So we're trying to do that to the best of our ability, no matter what's going on. Um, we know those guys know this how to get it going. It's their first time playing together, just like it was our first time playing together on the new year. Just so that we get a lot more familiar faces in our room than they did in theirs. You know, I I thought that uh, there was a lot of conversation about, oh boy, nobody played in the preseason game. Um, yeah, practices weren't real physical or whatever. But defensively, uh, in conversation with Lou Anarumo, he, he, he charted four missed tackles, which is a very good number, the way Pittsburgh runs the football and the way they handle it offensively and with the mobile quarterback that they have. You you guys you guys took care of business in that area. Yeah, you know, um, I, I think it was a big emphasis for us in the offseason just to make sure, you know, we tackle well. And we did what we had to do as a team. Um, and, and guys focused on that they got better. Um, I think the biggest thing, though, was I think it's a care thing. You got to want to. We got a bunch of guys on our team who want to go out there and be physical, who want to go out there and practice hard. I think even our practices, we feel like are pretty physical. And it's just the brand of football we want to play. So, you know, you're going to miss some. The, fortunately, on Sunday, we didn't miss too many. Um, so we're always keying in on that. We I know we did miss out on a couple of attempts to strip out the ball that we felt like we could have got more of. Najee Harris, three games in a row now. You guys have done a good job in 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 controlling and containing Najee Harris. I mean, he 
it was a it was a tough uh, tough grind for him out there. Ten carries of the football, twenty three yards as a team. The Steelers rushed it twenty two times, seventy five yards, three point four per. That's pretty good stuff. Yeah, man. Yeah, you know that's um that's our goal. Our goal is to go out there and be able to make put him in position to throw it twice, um, limit those yards because you know it's a game of inches and <clears throat> those yards matter. You know you start letting a team get up to where they feel like they feel confident enough to run the ball 30 times against you. That means the game is just flowing the way they want to. You know, you keep a team under those 30 carries, you can usually get get something good done. And um, keep them under 100 yards and under 30 carries, you, you can get some good things going for yourself. Any other defensive goals that, that you look at? I remember, you know, when I was playing the defensive coordinator to put up there, yeah. All right, I, want, I, want to, I want three takeaways – you know, I, I want uh, red zone efficiency at this percentage. I want this. I want third down conversions to be under this. Do you guys, do you guys have a set of, of goals defensively you try to uh, strive for every week, and does it change or is it pretty much the same? Uh, it's pretty much the same, um, and that's the hardest thing about it because you have a week like this week where you feel like you play pretty much lights out, but you still don't hit all those goals. Like you don't. We have a goal of three sa- or two and a half sacks, something like that. We didn't hit that goal, the takeaway goal, didn't get a takeaway. Hit the points goal, didn't hit the – I mean, we did hit the yards goal, hit the efficiency goal on third down, didn't hit it on the red zone because we were one for two. So it's at 50%. We're trying to be under 50%. Right. So it's, it's it's tricky those goals are because, you know, like you said, you, you feel like you had a good day at the office, but – there's, I'm, that's what we're striving for. If we can hit most of those, we want to go out there and hit all of them. But if we can hit most of them, we feel like we had a good chance of winning. So I think we did a good job. We did it. We did, the yards one was pretty impressive this week, just because you know our goal every week is 240 yards of offense, and you know to be under that in the National Football League means you're holding yourself to a good standard. No doubt. I mean, talking a full 10 minutes of overtime. They have 267 yards in 70 minutes <laughs> uh, uh, on 61 snaps, 4.4 yards per play. I mean, we're not talking about per rush. We're talking about per play. We're talking yeah. about running it, throwing it, everything else. Is, is Do you have a goal on that? Is 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 the uh, average yards per play, is there an efficiency there? Uh, I, don't, we, I don't think we have uh, per play. We have uh, – I know we do on rush. We want to stay under – we want to stay at 3.9 yards of rush. So we, that, that's, that's that. one of our personal goals. Yes. Yeah. We try every week. That's that's a big thing, especially on my end, being who I am as a player. I I hone in on that every week to be able to let those guys go out there and really rush the pride passer and, and get after what they do. So your your job is, you know, blue collar, no question about it. I mean, people really have to study, ta- you know, take a look at tape to really get a good feel for how you dominate the game what, what is what is it that you try to you try to do i mean what on, on a snap by snap basis what goes through dj reader's mind take me through you break the huddle you come up to the line of scrimmage what, what what's going on with dj reader uh first i'm trying to look at formation and um if i recognize it and what plays i know come out of these formations second I kind of just try to check out demeanor, demeanor and stance of the offensive line, you know, throughout throughout the week. I see if I can get a run pass key. And uh, then I'm listening to communication of what they have going on, depending on um, what we have going as a defensive play. I'm listening for that communication, but really with what the office is saying, who they're making the mic points to, who they're checking to, whether they're saying they're zoning to them, different types of words, who they may slide the pass to. All those things, and after that, you know, I'm just I'm trying to play with good technique, take good steps, keep my hands on the inside, and then I think the rest of the the rest of the stuff takes care of itself. You know, you have your plan of whether you're going speed or power and all that stuff in the rush game, but in the run game especially, it's just about being being technically sound and uh, just being fundamental and tight hands and playing with leverage, man. You know, I, I think that's really what it is, and then sometimes knowing everything's not going to go perfect. Sometimes you got to strain in there, and that's just what the nature of the position on the inside is. You're just going to have to strain and right. get through that play. So it's just it's just understanding all those things that could happen, and anticipating for me what what exactly is going to happen. I assume after watching tape of your performance against Pittsburgh, you had to feel pretty good that yeah. uh, that you played at a high level. I mean, it seemed like it to me. I I, I don't study the tape like you guys do, but. Looked to me like, you know, DJ Reader brought it like he always does. Man. 
Yeah, played pretty decent. Um, got to clean up some things at the beginning. Um, just jittery, just the leg jitters, and you know, just kind of right. taking a couple of false steps. Just so excited to get out there and play again. But yeah, you know, not not, not many complaints. I got to be, you know, I'm very critical of myself in my game. So you know, I got some things that I really want to work on this week coming up. But you know, I'm excited to go back out there again another Sunday and give it my all again. You know, I, I think a, a, the part of your game that is is underrated. I, I I think I mean you can you got pass rush ability. I mean, don't don't you feel like given the chance you can uh, you can do some things rushing the passer? I think I'm like that. Uh, you know that um that that one kid in your gym class or on your basketball team. You might not cut class him as like a shooter, right? Because you know he he can get hot and he can make some shots for sure. Yeah, but he's not. You wouldn't necessarily say he's like the shooter. You're not. You're not passing it to him with, with three seconds left, hoping he's going to make the shot now. Or he might hit you for 20 and you just like, damn, he's hot today. That's just, <laughs> that's kind of how I describe my pass rush. I might, you know, you might, I might be the guy three times in a row and you, you're you sitting there looking at it like D- DJ's is out here going crazy. But, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not my forte on what I do, especially the flashy moves. I'm a power guy. So that's where I'll be at in my wheelhouse. But, you know, I, I think I'll get more ops. I think I, I enjoy the opportunities that I get um, in the area that I get to rush in. A lot of times it's kind of if they're in the red zone or right on that fringe area, kind of 30. I enjoy that because especially on third down for me, I know those areas are shot areas. Like they try to go to the end zone, more right. deep routes. So, I mean, I when he tells me, oh, you can rush in the red zone, I'm like, cool, cool, cool. They probably try to score, so it's even better. Even better. Deeper routes, more time for me to get my rush there. All that stuff, so you know, I, I enjoy it, and um, but you know, like you said, I, I wouldn't say it was my forte of what I do. I, I've gotten better, and you know, I've always tried to look for ways to improve on it because uh, that seems to be what people care about. And I, I want my son to think I'm cool one day, so I'm trying <laughs> to get a try to get a couple more sacks in there this year. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, it, 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 People talk all the time about communication, communication on the back end, communication yep. linebacker, back end to linebacker, linebacker to tight uh, back end. But a good defensive fronts that I played against, man, there was a lot of communication that went on amongst mm-hmm. guys. So, and yeah. you guys seem to have that. You guys seem to have a lot of communication going on amongst uh, your group up front, don't you? Yeah, we talk all the time. Uh, we're always talking to each other, just whether it's just us in the huddle, huddle just talking about what we see communication relaying calls back and forth from side to side you know you got me and bj in the middle and josh and then you got those guys on the outside so we have to talk a lot yeah. talk through games um you, you usually end up working with the side when you're um in practice so you're just talking through games what you're comfortable with what's going on whether that guy's leaving if he's dropping he's got to tell me ozzy i gotta hear him all these things that just happen every day that people don't really pay attention to. And then sideline communications, I think, is huge for our team. Mm-hmm. We we On our defensive side, we all walk up and down and make sure every guy is talking to each other. And if we have questions, if we have problems, there's no egos that gets in the way of us getting, you know, it, it getting in the way of us getting things done. We can all talk to each other like brothers. Uh, I'd say even something as simple as during the game, if one of us sees another one's tired, somebody will yell, like, get him out, get him out, get him out, get him a couple plays. Like, what? Well, he's going to go back in. Don't just get him out. Somebody go right. get him. Th- those type of things that we're all locked in on and with each other, especially in our room. And uh, Coach Hobby seems to, you know, li- obviously he wants everybody <laughs> buying in, you know, totally. And it seems like the rapport that you guys have with him and he has with you is great. And Coach Hobby seems to be a guy that's a real attention to detail guy too, isn't he? Yeah, he's very attention to detail, and he, you know, he doesn't coach you too hard on game days. He wants the guys to take care of himself. He wants to be able to have open line of communication. Yeah, all of us guys to talk to each other now in practice. He's coaching you hard. He's very yep. on you. He, he's a hard, tough coach in practice, man. But uh, he definitely on game day he expects for his dogs to go out there and hunt and. Um, I appreciate that. You know, a coach has got that much confidence in you because he knows what you've done during the week. He knows that if one guy's tapping out for another guy to come in, that that next guy has put in that much work and put in enough work that I can trust him to go out there and get the job done. You know, uh, in conversation with Coach Anarumo, it's like he, he's 
he's very clever, you know, with, with how he uh, puts together different looks, different personal mm-hmm. groupings, all the things that go along with it. But he talks about the reason I can do that, the reason that I can fiddle around and be, kind of, quote, the mad scientist kind of thing is because I know up front the consistency of what I get up front allows me to tinker a little bit on the back end. That That's a high compliment, man. Yeah, man. You know, I'm, and, you know, the, the trust that Lou has in us that he doesn't always have us moving. He's not always trying to simulate pressure. He's not always trying to do this. He's not trying to do that. Um, it means a lot for us. You know, he lets us get out there and he gets us play, lets us play. He let he gets us the call early. We we know where we're in. We get to set our pads, set our jaws, know what we're getting ready to do. And um it's expected. You know, when you're you're in that room and you have fun, you got a bunch of guys who get after it, it's expected and the young guys come on to it and it makes for a fun team. And um I enjoy it. I I I love that our coach has that much confidence in him because we got that much confidence in him on what he's going to call, and we all feel like we're on one accord and we're out there playing for him. You know, it's uh, you mentioned a lot of the things that you did so well. They only had 13 first downs in 70 minutes, 32 to 13 in first down. Man, you look at all these numbers. The numbers are so crazily in 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 favor of the Bengals, other than you know, the final score because of the turnovers. I mean, it, it yeah. really up to that, obviously, but they only had 13 first downs, 26.7% conversion on third down. I mean, it's some of these numbers are, are mind boggling, but w- when you look at it, some of the things, it's obvious some of the things did well. When you take the deep dive, uh, you're always striving for that perfect game and it's never yeah. going to come, you know, what, what can you, what can you do better? What can, what can you do better as a team? Oh, uh, you know, there's plays here and there that, you know, we wish we had back. Um, some of the trick plays, I think we feel like we could have been a little more locked in. Yeah. Uh, they're going to they're gonna happen, you know. But um, I think the toughest thing for us is we didn't get out of that first 15 for a while. You know, the kind of the gadgets, the things like that. We didn't get out of it for a minute. Okay, what was it? We were in it for, what, three, three, four drives? So, you know, guys aren't really – usually by that time of the game, you're kind of in the regular, normal flow of the game. Kind of caught us off guard a little bit. But – I think just staying focused, um, the the little things, man, of when, what techniques we're playing, how we play those techniques, not just doing our own things, um, not fall stepping, things like that. You know, you can always clean up those things. I think, yeah, I obviously think we played great team defense the other day. But there's – every guy has to go look at his film, tell himself the honest truth, let the coach tell him the honest truth. And then go and correct it. And then we'll be back next week and we'll be in Dallas this week. And we'll be better for it. And every week there'll be something that we can always correct and we can always go out there and do better. You're right, though. I mean, that the reverse pass, you know, the flea flicker type thing, uh, mm-hmm. that, type, that tight end screen. Those two, you take those two plays away, they got nothing. I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, it's like they got, they, they're scratching nothing. Um, so, yeah, just a, just a little thing. Little mm-hmm. thing here or there. All right, so let's – the Pittsburgh game is is in the books. It's, it's it's done and finished. Can't do anything about it now. It was, uh, yeah. you know, opportunity that didn't work out. But now you have a chance to to rebound, go down to Dallas and and play play the Cowboys. Dak Prescott had, had the broken the bone in his thumb operated on. He's got a couple of screws and a plate in there. He's going to be out at least a month, a month and a half. So no Dak Prescott. you got Cooper Rush, who has been around there for a while. He knows their system. He's got some experience at the quarterback position. When you uh, when you look at the Dallas Cowboys and the two players, you know, Elliott and Pollard that they have in the backfield, are you guys anticipating a heavy dose of the run? Oh, yeah, man. You know, especially with the guys they have up front or, you know, as historically had, how that, that team is historically set up. Um, you know, that we think we're going to get a good dose of runs. We know Cooper Cup can – I mean, uh, not Cooper Cup. Sorry. Cooper Rush can do his thing and – you know, that's really what we focus on every week, though. Every week we start off first and second down. We What runs are they going to get? They got two good backs back there. Uh, both of those guys can really run the peel, and it's impressive because both of them can receive the rock out the backfield. It's kind of – it's cool. I always watch them a lot on Sundays. You know, I grew up – my mom's a Dallas Cowboys fan, so – Really? I've kind of always watched Dallas games, and, um, you know, they got really good backs back there. You got Zach Martin at guard, good, a good good receiving group of guys. They got – um. Uh, so 
you know, they're, they're going to be good. Their coaches are good. Their staff's good. And they got a hell of a defense over there. So they're going to be good. It's going to be a good challenge for us. Yeah. I mean, uh, CD lamb is, is a talented guy, but the yeah. guy, the guy that I think, you know, is going to be somebody that, that Cooper rush might lean on a little bit as a security blanket is, uh, Dalton Schultz. I mean, that's, mm-hmm. that, that's not a household name at tight end, but that dude, man, he, he plays. He's a very consistent player on a week-to-week basis, isn't he? Oh, yeah, man. I got him on my fantasy team. I got to sit him this week. Um, but, <laughs> you know, he, he's a good player. I picked him up in my league, so I know he's a good player. Um, and then, you know, you got him and uh, the Washington kid. Is he still – is he over there too? Uh, mm-hmm. The guy that was with Pittsburgh last year. Yeah. So they got some They got some guys, um, and, you know, they're going to they're gonna do what they do. And then they got a great fan base. You know, you always you're going to a stadium with a great fan base and an owner that expects a lot of you. So they're always going to go out there and play with a chip on their shoulder. Have you played uh, down at that at that unbelievable stadium, Jerry? Yeah, Ward? yeah, yeah. I have, I have, I have. We got the, you know, unfortunately it was during the hurricane, but you know we got a chance to go down there and uh, practice and be around the facility and see that whole setup. It's really, really nice. Yeah, it is. I did, uh, I did a bowl game. A college bowl game down there and and a uh, couple of uh um did the red river battle down there between texas mm-hmm. and then the bengals uh did play down there uh one time that you find yourself mesmerized by those big screens i mean oh you man you have to you take do. your eyes off them don't you you do you do you do you gotta look down i'm a, I'm a tunnel vision on the game guy but sometimes you'll catch yourself on the sideline just watching just looking up the whole time. Like, I, mean, I remember doing it, especially in the preseason when we played down there. Yeah, uh, that, that's an, that's an un, unbelievable, unbelievable facility. So, yeah, I mean, your mom is a, is a Cowboy fan. That's right. I mean, you're – give us a little background on where you were uh, – where you were brought up, where you played your, your football, where your family's from, all that kind of thing. Um, whole family's from North Carolina. Um, grew up. My mom played college softball in college, so she's always – we've been more of a college sports people. My dad's a – I'm basketball – being from Carolina, everybody's big basketball people. There you go. And you got two choices, Carolina, Duke. I'm a Duke man myself. <laughs> My dad's a Carolina guy. Mom's a Duke girl. Um, so just that tobacco row, that, that tobacco row robbery was always a crazy thing in our household. And – um. A lot of my friends are Panthers friend, fans. I can't say who I was a fan of. They sworn to hate you see now, so I can't even talk about that team. Um, and uh, my mom was a Cowboys fan. My dad didn't really, my dad didn't really like pro football that much, so we we didn't have to worry about him. My mom was a Cowboys fan. You know, she'd always tell me it was America's team. I never could figure out why it was America's team. I just didn't understand. And but she'd always talk to me about just the great players they had. Um, it's really my introduction to football, you know, learning about Emma Smith, Michael Irvin. Yeah. I was just start all those guys, you know, um, just, just, just people that, you know, um, she had always looked up to and always talked about learning about Jerry Jones. This is the first owner whose name, whose name I've ever known. First owner, you know, just, just the whole city. I didn't even know where Dallas was. <laughs> I just remember her talking about the Dallas Cowboys all the time. So, yeah. Yeah. All right, so basketball big in your family, no question about that. North Carolina, big big heritage there of mm-hmm. hoops. Let's get back to let me ask you about as a competitor. Okay. When you're when you're dealing with what took place, division rival, home game, a lot of build up, a lot of hype, and it doesn't work out well. How long does it linger? How long does it stay with you? Are you a guy that gets over it quickly, DJ, or is it something that you have to process through? How does that work for you? Oh, uh, it's something I got to process through. Um, you know, you got to – I deal with it different than what I did when I was a child. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say child, but just younger. Right. Um, I, I, I don't get as – emotionally hurt on the outside as I am on the inside for for reasons that I know that I can take it more on the inside, but if I express it outwardly, then I kind of mess up everybody's mood. Right. And so I'm, it's kind of different than that. But uh, I think, you know, some I've never thought about it this way, but the what Derek Jeter described it perfect when he was talking about uh, 
in a series, the captain, and he was like, you know, some people treat this as a as a game, a childhood game that you play out here, like with your relatives, and that you're gonna go out here and play with your aunts and uncles and cousins and stuff. But that's not what it is. This isn't that. This is a game, yes, but it's not that kind of game. This is a game of of war, of passion, of pride, of everything. You, you, a respect. That's what you're out there fighting for every week. And when you fall short, it should bother you. It should move you. It should move you for more than just some seconds, some hours, because you put way more than that into it. That wasn't the amount of time. You put way more time than just that amount of time into it, into the the yep. preparation for that battle. So um, yep. I think for me, that, 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 that would be what it is. It's not as much on the outside as mentally, I got to sit there and I got to think and I got to process and take a couple of days until, you know, I can go back out there and get that taste out of my mouth again. I'm always preparing for the next team, but, you know, Sunday is the only time I get to go out there and actually get that taste out of my mouth. So it lingers until the next week. Sure. So you're one of the leaders of this football team. There's no question about that. How do you, how do you help your team get over it? I mean, are you, are you a guy that just kind of, all right, watch what I'm doing, how I'm doing it. Are you, mm. are you a guy that reaches out to people or do you wait for people to reach out to you? How do you help your teammates get through, you know, a tough defeat like that? You know, I think we reach out, we talk to each other. I, I, I'll actively talk about the game. I'm not one of those people that's scared to talk about what the game and what happens. And, right. Because it's the game. It's going to happen week to week. And um, I think it's – it's all about getting the feel, the common goal that everybody knows. We don't want that taste in our mouth for the rest of the year. Week to week to week, we don't want to have that same taste that we had that, that was left in our mouth after that game. After our last two games, you know, um, right. I think everybody everybody starts the season thinking you're gonna just go 17 and 0. This is how we're gonna roll out. We're going to the Super Bowl 17 and 0. You would go to the playoffs, win all those games. You know, just not that's not the fairy tale of what football is. You know, we know it's a week to week thing. It's any given Sunday. You got to put in the preparation and the work for each one of those weeks. So I think it's not even about something that you even have to show the guys. And then the guys saw how hard you prepared for it last week and you still fell short. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's more about them understanding and you understanding, hey, just because you work this hard, it's not guaranteed. You got to put more in. You got to understand more. You got to be ready for harder times, times that, you didn't think would come. You thought you prepared well enough last week. So we what try again. We gotta go back again. We go back to that drawing board. So how do you look at it? Is like on a weekly basis, is it more about the opponent or is it more about you? You know what I mean? It's like like this football game. Is it more about the Cincinnati Bengals uh for this football game, or is it more about the Dallas Cowboys? I think it's more about what we do, but if you're a fool to not know your opponent and not be prepared for battle. Right, right. You know, I think it's more about what you do, and I think every team should think that way. Yeah. It's more about what you do and how you execute your plan, but if you don't know your opponent and you don't know how to attack that person and you're not prepared for battle, then you're a fool as well. Yep, totally agree. So what do you like most about this football team, this, this 2022 Cincinnati Bengal football team? Oh, man, just how resilient and competitive we are, man. You know, it's it's so what? Now what for most of us? It's so what? Now what? Turnover, so what? And go out there. You see how the offense came back and they strike, they strike down the field in the second half. It looked like a tale of two halves for them. And, that, and that, that's what I appreciate about the guys. Everybody's competitive. You see how guys talk to each other in the locker room. When we're playing ping pong, how much we talk trash to each other all week, everybody. And it's and it's something as simple as that sport because it's an even playing field for everybody. Every nobody's a master at ping pong. Everybody has to be good. You see, skilled guys lose to big guys. Big guys beat skilled guys. All, it's it's a bunch of it mixes around, and so it creates that competitive juice that we have just on our team in general. And nobody's backing down. And I'm appreciative of that. And we all got our brothers back. You know, on defense, we cheer just as much of them as they do for us on offense. I and mean, you know, we're gonna go pick them up any chance we get. Tell you in, the, in that locker room, it's ping pong tables, card tables. There, mm-hmm. There's always, there's always competition going on, man. Everybody's there's always, always competitions going on, man. There's always a bunch of stuff. We got the basketball goal in there. We get to go yep. shooting. 
A yeah. bunch of stuff going on, man. Guys are always just trying to one up each other, and it, 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 it's 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 fun. It creates for a fun little frat house, you know, <laughs> in our in our locker room of a bunch I, of guys just in there being, you know, being what guys do, doing what guys do. I hear you. Let me get you out of here on this, and uh, appreciate you carving the time you did on a on a day where it's you know recharging the battery day, and for you to give us this time is greatly appreciated, my man. Of course, what, man. What do you like most about football? What is it about football that, you know, is, is, boy, I just, I can't live without it. It's, it's that important to me. What is it, DJ? It's a true team game where I have to depend on other people. It's the ultimate alpha game. Yeah. There's strategy. There's combat. There's blood. Glory, athleticism, everything. What's there not to like, man? Like what that's the thing for me. Like, what's there not to like? Every it, there's intricate parts of the game, and then sometimes it just comes down to literally just sheer will and strain and strain. And it it teaches you so much about life. The game is the passion you have to have for it, the way you can grip it by your hands, and it can be gone from you just like that as well. But it's just the love you build for this game because of the work that you put in, how you have to build your armor for it, how you have to be prepared, how you have to understand it, what, like, the, the things that could happen that might not happen. Like, everything about this game this is why I love it. And it's something that I've been doing since I was a kid. And, right, right. you know, every part of it has evolved for me, and I still feel like that kid every every day that I put my knee pads in, I put my thigh pads in. I still feel like that kid, though the game has evolved so much for me. It's still at the basic level. I'm still going to tie my cleats the same. Still going to put my pads in the same. I'm going to get in my stance. I'm going to go foot to end line to get ready to get in my stance. It's, it's the same exact. So I'm going to put my hand on my, so I don't fall out on my face. Same <laughs> stance I started. I've been doing since I was eight years old, man. And so it. That's what I love about it. And every sport that I've played before in my life, I can take it and apply it to this sport, and it helps. Hmm. And so I, I – and everybody's got to do it. It's not one player that's going to do it for you in this sport. And, that's, and, again, that's what I appreciate. It's everybody doing a one eleven. You got to work as a team. You know, a lot of – just about everything you said, I think is the reason why it is America's sport, number one sport. Mm -hmm. I mean, TV ratings are – off the charts and it's like there are 32 teams so there's 16 live dramas every single week, every doesn't, week. Matter what, doesn't matter what day of the week it is people are going to tune in because man <laughs> it is real life drama going on right there yeah, and, it, <laughs> and if you watch it close enough it tells you a lot about the god the people who are out there playing it yeah if you watch it close enough you understand the what's going on in the game it could tell you about how how they structure their whole program, how, how the organization is, how, how everything is top to bottom based off watching that team play, how they're going about it, how the guys are going about it, how the, the type of guys they recruit or the type of guys they pick to be on their squad. You, that, that's the, all the cool parts of it. How it's a, everybody's got a house. Like you said, there's 32 houses. You, you can tell, what furniture's on the inside of people's houses is based off of what their team looks like. And that, you know, that that's that, that's tremendous to me. You know, something like that is kind of crazy. That is. I agree. One final question. I, I, I guess I like you mentioned all these all every sport you played has helped you. You're a hell of a baseball player. Just give mm. it people that aren't real familiar or, or aren't aware. Talk about your storied athletic career, not just in the National Football League, but man, you're a hell of an athlete. Hey man, I try to try to tell people all the time. I was one of those kids. I was just an outside kid. I've always been an outside kid, man. It's just kind of never, never was always in the house, and you know, played a bunch of sports growing up just to try to get rid of energy, things like that. And I played a lot of baseball and just really fell in love with that game. Yeah. So I was fortunate enough for it to take me places I never would have been able to go just playing football. Uh, I, I'll, I'll say that being able to travel the world, see the world different. Uh -huh. See the United States different now, just outside of my neighborhood. And then 
you know, having a goal when I came back and just things like that. And, you know, that uh, that, that sport fortunately took me all the way to college. And But, man, I, I still feel like I got it. It's one of my favorite things. It's one of my passions. I, I enjoy watching. I'm just a sports junkie. No matter what sport we're playing, no matter what sport's on, I'll sit and watch it with you. So uh, I, I would say true also to these kids, if anybody of these kids listen, man, just play more sports. Yeah. No matter what season it is, pick up something, get out there and give it a try. You might be trash, but at least it's giving you some different type of athletic <laughs> movements yeah. going on in your body. I wasn't the best basketball player. I was decent. It wasn't like I was awful, but I played it because it was fun. It was something competitive to do. It always it stimulated that competitive part of my mind that I always need to get done. So college baseball player, what what positions? I pitched and played first base at Clemson. How about uh, that? I, I was, essentially, I was essentially in a squad pitcher. I never really got the name for that part. <laughs> but, you know, I enjoyed it. I, I had a good time, man. I, it was a blessing. I really thank Coach Leggett and the guys for letting me be on the team and be out there. Um, it was a dream for me as a kid, and I, it's kind of crazy. Um, now that I look back on it, to say that was one of the goals that I hit as a kid because it was definitely a far-fetched dream for me. Well. Congratulations on uh, on all of your successes uh, and, and the kind of human being and person you are. City of Cincinnati is blessed. And uh, DJ, next time I catch up with you, man, we 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 get these cookies from Buskin Bakery. It's a it's a it's a well known bakery here in Cincinnati. And Brian Buskin made these cookies. Um, and it's uh, Dave Lapham in the trenches. Brought to you by First Star Logistics logo on here. And I know. Uh, I know you, you, you like cook. I know I love cookies. You like cookies. Yeah. You know, maybe we can, uh, maybe instead of breaking bread, maybe we can break cookies together a little bit. Maybe I'll take care of you there. All right. That's cool. That's cool. I'm That's cool. Good. I'm with that. <laughs> You're the best DJ. All right. I'll see you, man. Have a good day. Dave Lapham here. And every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership and appreciating your teammates are key at first star logistics you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family build your future by working hard like i did you'll see results both on and off the field call first star logistics today and be part of our winning team